Hey, Scott. Uh, it's nice to see that you actually are back this time. After all, last time I think you made like four videos and uh, you didn't. And then you stopped. So, nice to see that you're back. Anyway, um, I just wanted to point out a couple things. I agree with everything that you said on that on your video on morality. I just wanted to point out something to you. Alright, so what I wanted to point out to you was the existence of a moral philosophy that is deontological in nature. In other words, it is based on rules that you must always unconditionally follow. And it is ultimately based on what uh, Immanuel Kant uh, thought was the true basis for rationality and reason. What Kant was arguing was that morality and ethics are not the study of whatever maximizes society's well-being or anything like that. He thought that ethics and morality were the study of freedom. Kant argued that whenever we act for some desire that we have, we are acting for something that was either conditioned biologically, so our desire for sex or our desire for food, they're part of our biology. We most likely have those desires regardless of uh, whatever, anything else. Our desire for food and sex are almost universal. Or we might be acting from a de desire that was socially conditioned. Uh, for example, our desire for an education. Uh, those aren't, those probably aren't a part of our biology. Uh, we, if we didn't exist in a society full of educated people, we probably wouldn't have that desire. Now, in either case, we did not choose those desires. They were conditioned for us either by our biology or by society. So what Kant seems to be arguing is that we're not free in any sense, in the sense that he's talking about when we act from those desires. So then one might ask, well if we take away those desires, don't act from them, what's left? Well Kant said that reason is. We can either act from our desires or we can act from reason. Which obviously leads to the question, well, what is reasonable? What is rational? Now, I should say at this point that what Kant was trying to derive here was what he called the categorical imperative. In other words, an imperative, a law that holds everywhere in every time regardless of anything else. Uh, the rational oughts that you described in your video are called hypothetical imperatives. They only apply in a certain situation. So, what Kant was trying to do was derive a law that you must follow no matter what the circumstances, no matter where you are, no matter when this happens, no matter what the consequences of your actions are. And Kant argued that this imperative was simply that you act in accordance with some law that everybody in that society could hypothetically follow. So in other words, when you're about to do an action, you must imagine a society in which everybody did that action. Because this action is categorical. It applies everywhere. If you follow it, then everybody else should be able to. And he argued this because I'm sure that you and I both know that reason is inherently universal. You know, if I have the all too common syllogism, uh, Socrates was a man, all men are mortal, therefore Socrates was mortal, that applies to every, everyone, to all rational beings. It doesn't matter uh, whether you decide to ignore it or not. Now, at this point, you might be trying to argue that 
that is extremely hollow. It has no content whatsoever. You could imagine almost any action as being universalized. You can take any action and imagine everybody in that society doing that action. Well, not according to Kant. This is where the reason thing comes in. If the action results in a logical contradiction, then the action is non-universalizable and thus irrational and thus immoral. Now, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by you get a logical contradiction when you universalize an action? Well, let's imagine, for example, stealing. Or more specifically, let's say that a bun there was a bus that I want need to go on to get to my destination. There was a huge line of people, and the back door was open, and I could sneak onto that bus without anybody noticing. Should I do that action? Well, let's imagine a society in which everybody uh, would do that. But if everybody did that, then there wouldn't be any bus system running because nobody would have paid for it and the bus company would go bankrupt. But this assume, but that's a contradiction because if I want to go on the bus, I have to assume that there is a bus system. But if the action were universalized, there wouldn't be a bus system. So we have a logical contradiction. And therefore, I damn well better get to that back of the line and pay like everybody else. And if you assume a couple more premises with this imperative, you can derive what is actually probably the most famous part of Kant's philosophy, namely that you must never use a pers another person as merely a means to an end. You must treat every human being as an end in and of itself. He does that by assuming the universalizability principle, and he also assumes that A, human beings are rational, and B, that human beings have free will. And I'm not going to get into how he derives it. Uh, you can, there are three books that Kant wrote on the subject. The first is Critique of Practical Reason, the second one is The Metaphysics of Morals, and the third one is Groundwork on the Metaphysics of Morals, and you can look up those books at any time and see for yourself how he derives that. But for now, just take my word for it that Kant derives you must not use any other human being as merely a means to an end. And just a few of the other things that Kant wrote about, whether about ethics and that kind of thing. And by the way, I should mention that Kant didn't like uh, using these kinds of scenarios as ethical yardsticks. Actually, same thing with Napoleon Bonaparte. He was once asked, I can't remember what problem it was, but it was some famous, uh, what would you do in this situation problem? And Napoleon said, the reason why I became the emperor of France is because I don't get myself into those situations. But just a few things that uh, kind of argued are either moral or immoral is a lying according to Kant lying is a big no-no you cannot lie under any circumstances for any reason uh, and he thought that this was because if I try to universalize lying there would be no language I could not trust anything anyone else said and there would be no language also, Kant argued that whenever you lie to someone, you are implicitly using that person for some end, which, again, Kant said is immoral. And before I go on any further, I should mention that this was, that there was a problem that was brought up during Kant's lifetime, even, uh, with this principle. It's called the inquiring murderer principle. Basically, um, if a murderer comes to my door and asks where, uh, where my brother is because he wants to kill my brother, and as it happens, my brother is hiding downstairs in the basement. Now, 
Kant would argue that I cannot lie to the murderer. I cannot say, no, he isn't in here. Uh, now, Kant argued that this was not actually a defect in his philosophy. He argued that, yes, you should indeed not lie to the murderer. But it should be mentioned that this, that does not imply you have to tell the murderer the truth. You can just tell, tell him that you don't know where... Um, well, actually, you couldn't uh, tell him you don't know because you do know. But you could, say, refuse to answer his question. But anyway, that's considered one of the defects in Kant's ethical theory. But anyway, there are some more uh, things that Kant argued were uh, definitely either moral or immoral. As I mentioned earlier, stealing is immoral. Uh, murder, because in order to take someone's life, you have to assume that the person's, li the person's life exists, that there are people alive who you can murder, but if killing were universalized and the death rate was higher than the birth rate, there would be no lives for you to take, so that would be uh, non-universalizable and thus immoral. Uh, what's another one? Oh, suicide is actually an interesting one. Kant argues that you cannot uh, take your own life uh, because it's because you're using your own body. Or another thing that he argued was you're acting out of your own self-love. Uh, Kant also argued that charity was an imperative. Um, and there was one last one. Oh, yeah. Kant uh, argued that we cannot be cruel to animals. Even though animals are not rational beings, he argued that we cannot uh, be cruel to animals because um, empathy is a, an emotion that we have that, uh, that in general would allow us to follow this categorical imperative and helping out animals uh, increases our sense of empathy and uh, being cruel to animals decreases it, and therefore is immoral. I think that's all I wanted to say in this video, that uh, there, is, there are secular ethical theories that uh, argue that uh, there are absolute moral oughts, as you put them, that we must always follow. Uh, so, yeah, bye. I hope to get a response to from you, Scott. And with that, see you all later, YouTube.